Hello guys, look what just arrived all the way from the UK. Today I am going to attempt to repair what's inside this envelope, so let's begin by opening it. First, we have a Raspberry Pi Model 3B that does a power on when plugged in. Likely the issue is with the PMIC that is right behind the micro USB. The other one as you can see is Model 4B with 4GB of RAM, based on the description of the problem on the box. I would say it may be a RAM issue but we'll see it later in the video. Before we continue, I am happy to announce the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. They feature a variety of advanced and high quality services such as producing PCBs with up to 60 layers and SMD stencils, advanced CNC machining, sheet metal bending, injection molding, and a variety of 3D printing technologies including metal 3D printing while enabling you to customize every aspect of them. All this at very reasonable prices. You can upload your designs, specify your requirements and get an instant quote for your project. Their PCBs start as low as $5 for 10 pieces. You can find the link to their website in the video description. Now let's begin with powering them on just to confirm the listed issues and to see if there will be any clues as to where the problem can be. The developers of Raspberry Pi were so kind to include two debug LEDs that can be really helpful when searching for problems with the board. So there is one red and one green LED. The red one is connected directly to the 3.3 volt rail, which is the main power rail of the Pi. Since it is created from the 5 volt that you need to supply by the USB or the GPIO pins, if the red LED is blinking that indicates there is a problem either with your 5 volt power supply or the PMIC responsible for generating the 3.3 volts. The green one is connected to the SOC and there are different morse like codes it can display by regularly blinking, depending on the fault detected by the SOC. Here we can see that the red LED isn't blinking at all, but the green one is blinking very fast and irregularly. There is no SD card inserted and there is no display output, so probably the only thing left is a faulty SOC PMIC which on the Raspberry Pi 4 generates 1.8 volts for the SOC from the 3.3 volt rail. Actually, the board is starting to heat up quite a bit around here so I'm going to disconnect it from power for now, so we can check the other board. It doesn't show any signs of life when powered on, so I connected a USB tester between it and the power supply I am using to check if the board is receiving any power at all. And sure enough, the board is drawing around half an amp on 5 volts. That means only one thing we have a problem with the 3.3V circuit or something connected to it. Now I will show you this very cheap alternative to a thermal camera. It's called Rosin Atomizer and its main purpose of it is to help with identifying shorted components. It functions a lot like a vape, with the main difference being that vapes vaporize a glycol-based liquid whereas this tool vaporizes rosin. The way this works is very simple, you put a small chunk of rosin in the heater cup, then you put this nozzle-like thingy on top and when you hold the button rosin vapor is produced. Now you need to aim it at the board you want to troubleshoot. As you can see when the vapor contacts the relatively cold PCB it forms very small crystals that appear white. You will need to fully cover the suspected area of the fault in order for this to work. Next thing is to apply voltage to the shorted circuit and to just look around for a spot where the rosin crystals are starting to melt and the board returns its color. Now I am plugging in the raspberry and we should be able to see the faulty part. It depends on the problem, sometimes it can take a while to heat up enough for you to be able to see it. Here you can clearly see that this PMIC is shorted. Now let's remove it and then we will check with a multimeter to see if there is still any shorts on the board. Here I am using the continuity mode to check for shorts to ground on the 3.3 or 5 volt rails of the Pi. Unfortunately, the other camera decided to stop recording right before I started measuring with the multimeter on the GPIO pins. Basically, it showed that there is around a 1 ohm short to ground on the 3.3 volt rail. Now if we just replace the PMIC, the new one will blow up again. So now we need to trace the second short. Therefore we need to repeat the process you just saw one more time, but now instead of plugging the micro USB cable, we will inject 3 volts directly into the GPIO pin, 
so the component that is shorted can get pretty toasty. When I turned on the power supply the current jumped straight to 2.3 amps. Then I saw that this chip was starting to heat up unevenly, so I flipped the board to check what it was on the other side. Sure enough, there is a filter resistor that looks boiling hot. I even suspected it could be hot enough to melt its own solder, so pulled on it with my tweezers, and to my surprise, it came right off. After removing it the 3.3 volt rail is no longer shorted. Now the only thing left to do is just to solder new PMIC to the Pi and everything should be okay. Here comes the moment of truth. And yes it is working fine now I will do some testing and will put it for sale. Here are some afterthoughts from the future. After I finished shooting the video, I was curious to see if the original PMIC was actually bad or not because I thought that it could have gotten hot because of the big current that the shorted resistor was pulling. So I soldered it back to the Pi and it was working fine. Now let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi 4. As we saw at the beginning of the video when powered on it gets pretty hot around the PMIC. So I am going to use the rosin atomizer again to see what is wrong with it. Upon plugging it in, we can see where is the problem. As far as I know, this chip is like a secondary PMIC that steps down the 3.3 volts to 1.8 in order to power the SoC. Unfortunately, I don't have a replacement in stock so the only thing I could do at this stage is just preparing the board for the new one when it arrives. This will be for today's video. I hope it was helpful in one way or another. Special thanks to my first and for now only patron, Scott Grayban. If you want to support what I am doing, you can find the link to my Patreon in the video description. If you have any questions regarding the soldering make sure to check my soldering tutorial. You can find links to most of the tools I am using in the description of the video. Also if you have any suggestions or questions feel free to write them in the comments below. I make sure to read all the comments under my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Till the next time, bye.